Oh, yeah. He's back. The crack of the bat, the ping of the crossbar, and the roar of the crowd. We cover everything you want to talk about. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Good morning, Canada. Welcome to the Rod Peterson Show on this Tuesday, August the 27th. I don't know where you are, but I can tell you where we are. It's pouring rain and cloudy here in this part of Western Canada. It is not a big bird day, but it is episode number 61 as we originate from the bunker uh, here in a field in Saskatchewan. Uh, Rod Peterson here, Darren DuPont there. If I'm candy, he's nuts. Yeah. How's that? That's good. And he is nuts. Sometimes. And Marshall Hamilton. I'd rather be nuts than candy, too. (laughs) Would you? you? Okay. I'm the eye candy of the program today. Um, Excited about the program today. There's nobody on the sponsor's couch today. What's up with that? Where is everybody? I don't know. Rainy day. They stay home. Don't show up. Called in sick. Yeah. And even our intern, Connor, you've, you're, how long has he been interning with us? Two months? Yeah. Six weeks? You yeah, finally no, put even, him to work today. Yeah, I know. The the, the, the free ride is over <laughs> working at now. the Rod Peterson Show. Um, we've got a full load of uh, guests on the program today. I can't wait to get into all the topics with Marshall here shortly. Um, his name came up in Atlantic Canada this weekend in a, in a fairly good way, but not entirely good way. We'll get to that. And you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Darren, can you tell me the full list of people that are on the show from this board down yeah, in front of us? I got the vantage point. Troy Westwood's going to come. He was supposed awesome. to be on yesterday. So that's great. Darren Bombing from uh, TSN Radio in Winnipeg will be on. And then uh, Wes Cates and Chris McKenzie, two former Ryder uh, alumni that, that are exciting to come on. And uh, Arash Madani will be on before. All right. Those. Sounds good. I love that because everybody asks me about being on the guests that are coming on the show. Why do people text me when I go to air? Do they not know? Uh, He's busy. I'm busy. I'm busy doing busy things. Anyways, people say about the guests, who's on next week? I said, I don't know who's on tomorrow. And that's the truth. Yeah. And the people say, well, when do you know when they're on? I said, well, usually they tell me when I'm leaving today's show, they'll tell me tomorrow's guest. It'll go in one ear and out the other until I come in tomorrow morning. I'm not even even listening. And then I'll find out just before we go to to air who is on the program. It's a big, big day today, apparently. A huge day. But that goes, you know, part to the guests we have and, and, you know, Clark's job, but also the relationships you've built that you don't need to know who's on the show before because you've got we'll great relationships with everybody. And it's like, yeah. it, it's what's beautiful about this program. It's, you know, who are we having coffee with today when you show up and you don't know who's going to be there? And it's, it's literally amazing. Uh, catching up with old friends is what we're doing. Every morning at 10 Mountain, uh, which reminds me, tons of people chiming in from B.C. this morning. Corey, while well, he's in South Regina, JR's in Cranbrook, B.C. Danny Monroe chiming in from Campbell River, British Columbia. Wayne in Victoria, of course, is setting his watch by when we go on the air, 9 p.m. Pacific or 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, so a good, a good chat upcoming. Number 61s for episode number 61. I wrote one down, Josh Beckett. Major League Baseball pitcher, yeah. Red Sox, right? Yeah. Marshall, you had a better one. Well, I don't know what's better. I mean, these guys are all great great people and great individuals. But for me, I, I, I tend to think Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And for me, growing up, Ed McCorders, number 61. Just a tremendous person, tremendous uh, defensive tackle. Uh, a guy, for those of you that don't know, who lost an eye due to a, you know, I think home carpentry type accident, but still continued to play. Um, just a, a remarkable football player and, and one of the legends of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in my, in my youth. So for me, it's Ed McWhorter. So you see, in the NHL, he would have won the Masterton Trophy, Bill Masterton yes. Trophy. He came back and played after that I, with one I'm eye. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I believe, I believe that. he did. I believe that to be true. Because they didn't have awards like that back then in the day. Now they do. I think it's, uh, it's the Jake Kadar Award. Uh, one of the greatest mm-hmm. commissioners of all time in the yeah. CFL. Yeah. By the way, as we roll through the topics here, and your number 61s are welcome on the program. I literally only had Josh Beckett written down. Rick Nash. You got, well, thank you, Rick Nash. That's right. The most go. overrated player in NHL history. No, thank you. He yes, was, he is. What do you mean, no? Well, maybe in his career, he was a top 10 NHL player, though, or top four or five or, five or six NHL player when he was prime. He was a dominant power four, but he's kind of the Eric Lindros thing, right? Never the won. The way that that was going, too, the power forward's kind of leaving the game a little bit, but he was good. He could score. He could play physical. It, it was hard to move him off the puck, and he played for Team Canada, too. Olympics. Oh, okay. He's bound for the Hall of Fame. I, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Today's poll question for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Should Josh Donaldson be booed in his Rogers Center return tonight? And I put up the tweet. Should at bringer of rain 20 be booed in his Rogers Center return tonight? That's why I got my Jays take October bunny hug on because they're not going to be playing in October. I thought I better put it on now. Um, I think I might boo him <laughs> if I was there. Really? I'm serious. 86% say no, he's a Jays legend, don't boo him. 14% say yes, and I put this up quite some time ago. From, from our website, 91% say no, he won't be booed tonight. And Marshall, you, obviously you're saying the same I, thing. I, I would say no. I mean, but let's, let's qualify your question. Will somebody boo him tonight? Absolutely. Should he be booed? Absolutely not. He was, a, he was I, I used the word legend already too many times today. He, he was a great, great player for the Toronto Blue Jays through two very remarkable seasons in the, in the last decade. And he deserves to be applauded for that effort, not for the way it ended for him in Toronto, because a lot of what, what caused him to end it in a negative way, if, if fans look at it that way, was injuries. And injuries are sometimes, you know, they're not necessarily bad preparation. Most of the time, they're just bad luck. So... Uh, I think we should remember him for those two great seasons. Well, not two. He had many great seasons, but in particular, those two great seasons where they, they won the pennant in Toronto. Uh, him and a number of other people were instrumental in that. So I think he should be applauded for that. Yeah. Would, would you stand and cheer? Yes, when they absolutely. Okay. I yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. Um, you got to remember him for what he was, and he was a great player. He was so key to those two, those two runs. And I know we, we didn't win. So he's not going to go Didn't down at all. like the 91, 92 teams. Got to the LCS. But, but he got to the LCS. And yeah, I don't think there's any reason to boo him for sure. Um, fair enough. But I was reading an article on Josh Donaldson this morning. And because I'm trying to remember, it was only a couple of years ago. But there's a lot of things going through this cranium. I'm like, did I miss something? No, I didn't. When I read the article, it said the Jays couldn't get rid of him fast enough. At the end, uh, while well, he traded him to Cleveland for, for literally nothing. Clark and I put our heads together here on the sponsor's couch before. So, okay, I wouldn't applaud, but maybe I wouldn't boo. But as John Lynch would say, Josh Donaldson was GWH. You know what that means? Great when healthy. That's a Lynchism. Yep. And, but when they needed him, when the chips were down in 2017, 2018, he wasn't there. Fair? No, that's fair. I but, mean, but why? You know, was he there because ah, I don't really want to play? I don't feel like playing. You're not paying me enough money. I don't think those were the reasons he wasn't there. I think the reasons he wasn't there were because of injuries. And and sometimes injuries, even when you rehab them and you come back, then then you got to get other things back. You got to get timing back. You got to get confidence back and stuff like that. So I I would cut him some slack. Not you, but anybody that wants to boo him, cut him some slack. Because you weren't in his skin. You don't know how hard he was trying to get back into the lineup or how, how hard he was trying to get back to that, that reputation that he had as the bringer of rain. He was a really good player. He's still a really good player, but he went through a bad spell there. And I, I attribute probably 95% of that to injuries. He brings his 32 home runs this season into Rogers Center tonight with the Atlanta Braves and his $23 million pay stub for 2019 so he wow. can still get it done oh, so yeah. why isn't he a jay i guess is what my point is and the jays couldn't get rid of him fast enough but enough yeah. about josh donaldson as we move on he brings up andrew luck and putting yourself in his shoes we're gonna have to get to that because i don't think <laughs> they're still talking about it in the states we'll t still talk about it here but the andrew harris scandal let, let's put let's park the brake drop anchor Wow. For our maritime friends, let's spend some time here for a second on Andrew Harris. Suspended for two games. That's not going away. The more I thought about it, I was driving away from the studio yesterday thinking about this is major integrity and balls by the CFL to suspend their top rusher, star of the league. They didn't want to do this, which we kind of brushed on at the end of yesterday's show. This is a tough decision for the CFL to suspend this guy. But my question to you, Marshall, because Darren and I covered it quite a bit yesterday, is A, how do you feel about the fact that it is a thing and two do you believe him when he says he didn't knowingly take a, a banned steroid <laughs> i've been thinking for probably the last 24 hours about coming on this show and you asking me a question about harris and thinking okay marshall you you pride yourself on being candid how candid do you really want to be and and who do you want to piss off when you start talking about performance enhancing drugs 
And I, first of all, Marshall Hamilton has never taken a performance enhancing drug. Look at this body. This is not. I don't believe it. I don't it's believe it. Drug, but, <laughs> but I competed in my career against people who did. And it's a really hard thing for somebody that's not, I'm going to use the word cheating, somebody who's not cheating to think, hmm. Who else is cheating? And, I, and it, it wasn't something you talked about back then. I don't know if they talk about it now. But, you know, you could, you could sort of see somebody go away after the off season or after the season ended and come back the next year and you kind of look at them and you go, that's the same guy? And, and you don't know that he cheated, but you sure strongly suspect that he cheated. But you just wonder, you know, how, how good of I, how, how much faster could I have run? How much stronger could I have been? How much more endurance could I have had if I had have taken performance enhancing drugs? I don't know the answers to those questions, but I think science would say you could have been faster. You could have been able to jump higher, you know, those kinds of things. So how do I feel about Andrew Harris? Do I believe he... He took it unknowingly? No, I Me don't. Either. I don't believe that. I, I, I think that that's become a conventional thing for people to say they get caught. They say, well, I, I'm not saying I didn't take it. I didn't knowingly take it, as if everybody in the world is going to say, oh, well, if you didn't know you took it, then we absolve you of, of all wrongdoing. I don't think, I mean, I, I th I'm a huge Andrew Harris fan. I think he's a tremendous athlete. I think he's a great leader. I think he's a great teammate. He's accomplished great things. But this will definitely tarnish his reputation because, yeah, he got caught. He t serves a two-game suspension. But the question that always comes to my mind is, okay, is it, he wasn't caught last year. He wasn't caught the year before. He wasn't caught the year before that. So how many times have these athletes that are caught done it for many, many years in the past and just not gotten caught? Either they slip through the cracks or they're taking other things to mask the, the, um, the, the, the drug showing up in their, in their urine or their blood or whatever. I'm not into the science of that, but I can tell you that you know, from a, a fan's perspective, this will tarnish his reputation, which is sad because just a, a week ago, or was it, yeah, I think a week or two ago, we were celebrating on TSN him passing Ben Cahoon for the most yards from scrimmage. Ten days ago. As a Canadian. Most all time. You know, and, I, and I'm not a Winnipeg Blue Bomber fan, but I was sure applauding that day for, for Andrew Harris. And now we're kind of going, hmm, what do we think of this guy's career now? <sighs> yeah. It's a toughie. It's <laughs> yes, it is. And can I just go one more, just uh, not down a road, but down an approach to use a Saskatchewan term? What about the message it sends to kids? Are we past that in society now? Because I don't believe athletes or even politicians or any leaders really should be role models. Look to the people in your own home to be your role model or somebody that you look up to that's not going to let you down. Not pro athletes. I'm with Charles Barkley on that one. He doesn't get paid to be a role model. But what about, do, do you guys agree with that? No. Or has Andrew Harris let kids down by this? Absolutely. He yeah? is a role model. It, you got to think about who your audience is. Politicians aren't role models for kids. They're role models for adults, <laughs> right? I mean, athletes are role models for kids and adults, right? If you, if, if you look at somebody and you think of anybody, man, I, I want to be that guy someday, then he's a role model, and, and you can't control that, right? You're a role model for certain people in this industry and, and people who just, I want to be Rod Peterson, right? And you can't control it. If you want to be in this business, if you want to be in the limelight, you're not going to lead a normal life. You have to take on added responsibilities, and he absolutely is a role model. So now it's his job to make sure he comes out of this the right way, and he has to look not only after himself, after his team, but after the kids and his fans for sure. So now Andrew Harris has let kids down. What do you think, Mark? Well, I, okay, let's, let's, let me put this into a bit of a philosophical perspective. If you want a perfect role model, don't pick a human being. Because <laughs> human beings will make mistakes. Even yeah. perfect, you know, not perfect. Even people that you admire and look up to because they're great at this and they're great at this and great at this and great at this, you know, when you jump into their closet, you kind of go, hmm, they weren't as perfect as they thought they were. So my... My suggestion as a parent to my kids and, and to parents out there to their kids is encourage your kids to admire qualities in multiple people. You know, I admire the work ethic of this person. I admire the leadership of this person. I admire the athleticism of this person. But don't, you know, pick 
an individual to be your role model because you might someday go, go oh, you know what? So-and-so just tested positive for performance-enhancing drug. Yeah. So I say admire qualities of multiple people to, and aspire to be, you know, I want to be as fast as him. I want to be as strong as him. I want to be a good leader like him. And, and that becomes your ideal because that can never be broken. But if you're going to pick an individual, don't pick a human being because we're not perfect. But you look at, you know, we all make mistakes. And it's funny, it came up in the basketball game on the weekend, the Rattlers game in their championship. They always had a second or third quarter lull where the other team would go on an 8, 10, 12, 2 or 12 0 run. And the reason they were able to win is they didn't have the, the bottom out was very small. Yeah. They corrected it really quickly. And I think that's important, too. I mean, geez, if we're putting it all on the table, I mean, look at Rod as a role model. And I know, you know, you've had your, your share of times, but look how you've come out of it and how you've reacted to adversity. And there's a lot to be proud of. And there's a lot that I would want, you know, in a role model out of that. Right. So Andrew Harris, how he comes out of this is so key yeah. to teach kids how to handle adversity and how to deal with the down, ups and downs. I mean, when you come to his legacy, think of Lance Armstrong, think of Tiger Woods, think of these guys who have gone through this. They've never been the same. Yeah. So we always think that it was because of that, right? Yeah. We always look back to that. If Andrew Harris can be like, no, this really wasn't anything. And if he can be mentally strong and brush this off and still be the Andrew Harris we've known in the Canadian Football League, we won't really think about the doping. This is the warm-up. We're just getting rolling. Conrad's really rolling on the Facebook string up here. For one, he says, I want to see Jeff Hecht on here. We have to talk about that after the break. You know what this is all about. The guy who went after the Ottawa Red Blacks long snapper linebacker earlier this season for this exact same thing Jeff Hecht did, embarrassed him, humiliated him on Twitter, and then Jeff Hecht's own teammate got nailed for doing the exact same thing. It's been very quiet from Jeff Heck <laughs> in the last 24 hours. We'll talk about that. And Conrad also said, are we going to talk about Touchdown Atlantic today? I would love to. I wanted to spend all of yesterday talking about Touchdown Atlantic because I was there and what a great game. But this Andrew Harris thing came up and uh, we shifted sales, if you will. How do you like my Maritimes terms today? <laughs> picked it up quick. Uh, so a lot of things to get to. This is the warm-up. We'll be right back. Canada's most watched Facebook live show is the Rod Peterson Show. Listen live at rodpeterson.com and catch our podcast at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, and iHeartRadio. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 